Welcome to NDTV Profit. The global markets and the Indian markets are witnessing sharp swings and volatility. This has been triggered by multiple events that have taken place in the last two to three weeks. To get a sense of what's happening in the global markets and how will it impact India, we are being joined by Mark Mobius, Chairman, Mobius Emerging Opportunities Fund. Mark, welcome to NDTV Profit. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, my first question is, you know, what is your assessment of the current situation in the global markets, partly triggered by fears of US recession, partly triggered by the N carry trade rewind, and to a limited extent, geopolitical issues? Well, the yen carry trade was uh, sort of the trigger to have a correction in global markets, particularly the US market. Uh, but you must remember the background to this is that there's a great deal of uncertainty uh, in the world, and particularly in the US, as a result of the upcoming election. As you know, the difference in policies between the Democratic and Republican candidates uh, are quite wide. The differences are very wide. So that's one of the keys to uncertainty because nobody knows how this will turn out at the end of the day, and it will have global implications. But in addition to that, there's the uncertainty about the war in Ukraine, uh, the situation with China and Taiwan, and the situation in Israel and the Middle East. So you have all of these certain certainties piling up uh, in the minds of people and investors around the world, and that creates uh, volatility. So when you have a trigger, like what you've seen in Japan with the yen carry trade, that carries over into the market generally. However, if you look at the correction in the U.S. market, it is not that big. In other words, we're not into a big uh, bear market at this stage of the game, at least. And if you look at India, India has performed better than the U.S. market. And that says a lot about the incredible growth rate of India and the dynamic economy that India now has. Right. So the impact on India is limited right now. Uh, but before we go back to uh, India specifically, you know, I would like to help our viewers understand what's happening globally, you know, especially after the Bank of Japan said that they will stop hiking the rates. There was a rally in all the markets, you know, Asian markets rallied, US markets rallied, Indian markets rallied. But today morning we wake up and we find that all the rally has fizzled out. So my question to you is, how long will this N carry trade play out? Is it fully done or will it keep coming back because of the interest rate differentials and the currency rate differentials between the uh, two countries? I think it's pretty much uh, played out simply because uh, what we saw is leveraging into this trade. Uh, the leveraging is what causes the incredible volatility. Uh, now, the leveraging is now being wound down. It's probably pretty much over by this stage. So you're going to, not going to see the kind of volatility that we've seen uh, in the first stages of this uh, deleveraging. Um, so uh, going forward, I believe the markets will move in a sideways direction rather than uh, a very volatile situation where you have 5 10% move, moves. This is not going to happen going forward, at least in the short term. Okay, you still see 5 to 10% move in the short term. And you, okay, so I have to now go back to the Indian markets. You know, we just had the RBI governor uh, talking about the global scenario and telling the uh, country that, look, India is resilient and we have enough reserves to absorb shocks. What is your view on India being able to control and absorb the shocks that are triggered in the global markets or any, any part of the uh, global market uh, geography? Well, I must say the RBI has done a very good job in uh, regulating the money supply, regulating the exchange rate, uh, and generally looking at the total economy in a very wise way. Um, you must remember one of the big problems in America is money supply, because during the COVID crisis, uh, the Fed increased money supply by 20, 30, 40 percent, depending on which month you were talking about. And then they made a big, big decline in the money supply. 
And money supply is what really drives market, you must remember. Now, in the case of India, the RBI was not so extreme. Uh, during the COVID crisis, they did increase money supply, but not as much as in the U.S. And therefore, the downturn, the decrease in money supply was not as dramatic. So you have two situations, one very extreme in the U.S. and one not so extreme in India. And that says a lot. And of course, if you look at the situation now, uh, money supply growth in America is down to single digits. Um, and a lot of the money that came in during COVID has been dried out. It's been used. That's right. one of the reasons why the market is weak. Uh, that's not the case so much in India. Right. Okay. So the other big uh, global factor that is playing out or could play out maybe in the next uh, one month or whenever the Fed cuts rate, assuming the Fed is going to cut rate from September to say till about January, uh, how will money move after the Fed cuts rates by say 25, 50, 75 basis points over a period of three to six months? Uh, will money move out of emerging markets? How will this play out and how will uh, you see money shifting to different assets apart from equities? Well, a rate cut would naturally move money from fixed income into equities under normal circumstances. However, as I mentioned, the U.S. money supply is not growing at a high rate. And therefore, there will not be a lot of money going into equities as a result of that. The equity market will do fine, but it will not be doing as well as it's been doing in the past. Now, here's where the political situation comes into play. If the Republicans come into power in America, they will cut taxes. This will have a big, big impact on the markets. There'll be a surge in investment. In addition, the Republicans will increase uh, production of oil and gas, which will mean a reduction in the price of oil and a reduction in the inflation rate in America, which will, again, will be very positive for the economy. On the other hand, if the Democrats come in, it'll be the opposite. You'll have increases in taxes, and you'll have a much more uh, a stronger government spending program, which will not generally not be good for the economy. So he, these are two different situations. That's the reason why the market in America is so uncertain, because nobody knows how this will pan out. Right. So till then, it's going to be uncertainty. But do you think how, how, what what will be the approach towards India? Do you think FIS will keep playing, shuffling money around, you know, uh, buy for 10 days, sell the next 10 days and wait and watch? No, I believe India, you must remember, it's a huge country. Uh, and uh, a lot of people must uh, seem to think that foreigners drive the markets in India. That's not the case. The local Indian investor is the one that drives the Indian market. And as you know, retail investors have become very active in the Indian market. One of the reasons why the uh, Reserve Bank has uh, told banks that they should attract more and more deposits is I believe they're afraid that uh, too many retail Indian investors are going into the market and gambling in the market, which is not good. So, uh, but nevertheless, uh, Indians are getting richer. Uh, the high growth rate means you've got more and more money in the pockets of Indians all over India. And the, that means more deposits and more money going into the stock market. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's a big concern for the banking system. You know, they are unable to raise deposits to continue doing uh, incremental business that is credit growth you know that's a big issue uh, banks are facing so therefore uh, let's assume that you are focusing on india and you want to be positive on india will you put money in banks or will you put money in other sectors i would not put money in banks yet because if, <laughs> if interest rates come down yeah. uh, they, they will be squeezed to some extent uh, however over the long term some of the banks may be attractive i would now put money into raw materials uh, companies that are producing raw materials for infrastructure, for industry generally. Uh, that would be any kind of raw material, whether it be steel, 
whether it be oil, whether it be um, uh, granite, uh, building materials, anything of that nature, I think will be uh, very attractive to go into at this stage.